season we are on a roll. This season we are on a roll. Even I need to lift my hand and just tap my back for once. <laughs> A uh, big thank you to each and every single one of you watching. You guys are the motivation. You are the reason why we are excited to come back to just constantly dish and give you this content. I am super excited for the conversation and the guests that we're going to have. But before that, my double M. Remember I told you about my double M, my merchandise manager. He's given me pointers because Babu last time nili nilikuwa naongea tu. So first and foremost, I want to say a big thank you to each and every single one of you. I told you last time Every single time when I start this, I am going to thank the people who enable this to happen. And that is you. You who has donated to this thing. You who has bought merchandise. It costs to do this. Eh? It costs money to do this. And it's our desire that we would do this and give this content for free forever. So to each and every single one of you who has enabled us to do this, I want to start off by telling you thank you. Have you done this? Some of you is just by watching. Yes, by watching this ad revenue which is made. So a big thank you. Some of you go to the Mpesa and you send tunes. Thank you so much for that. Some of you have committed. Richie, imagine there's some guys who have actually said every single time you're doing a shoot, there's a certain amount of money that I'm going to give you that will go to catering different things because we love the content and the value that you're given so that others may get to see. Wamaya and Aizo here need to be paid for the services and I am a proponent for not letting people do things for free. So a big thank you to each and every one of you who has given. Number two, as you can see today, I'm in a different hoodie. We've got hoodies. Hey, last time I, I wrapped through this, my double M, my merchandise manager, Ali Kasirika. So he's written for me. I even you see him, even a plaque card he's given me. So we've got hoodies in different sizes, small, medium, large, extra large, and XX large. Uh, hoodies are the ones like that. You can see them on your screen. We've also got snooties, again, in all sizes. Uh, price, as you can also see, is there. We've got CTA mugs, and we've got CTA bottles. And guess what, guys? We deliver everywhere where there's a DHL. Yani, we started this last week, and so many of you have already ordered. A big shout-out to you. Today, we're doing a delivery all the way to the UK. A big shout-out to you. We had, we've done a delivery to Eldoret and to various different places. So I just want to say thank you, man, because we started this in Ukweli, you guys have come through like the flu. God bless you. So without further ado, let me jump straight into this. But before I do, one last thing. Last time, what, 85% of you who are watching and have not subscribed. I am here to say that we are down to 82% of you who are watching this and have not subscribed. So I'm going to give you five seconds to hit that subscribe button because it's ideas the back end. It helps with the algorithm. And if you've subscribed, hit the like button or take a few minutes, pause the video and share this to a couple of people on WhatsApp. All this helps with the back end. It's another world of mine called digital, which I will explain to you, but in a, in a different time. So in five, four, three, two, one. Thank you so much if you've been watching with us this far, not fast forwarding. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another session of The Playhouse. My guest today is one of the most requested guests on CTA. We've been doing CTA for a couple of years, and this guy has been requested. Every single CTA, there's always somebody who DMs me. There's always somebody who writes in the comment section. There's always somebody who tags me asking for our guest to be on. Me and this guest go way back like Conros. <laughs> we go back like Spine. We go back like the Big Bad Wolf. We, only, we go back. We were in the gospel music together. Uh, so he's a good friend of mine. In fact, I've got a video snippet of something that he did over 11 years ago. I'll play it a bit later on so you need to keep watching. A video snippet of something that he did for CTA <clears throat> over 11 years ago. Wow. That's how way back we go. Let me tell you, this guy I have seen, he's got so many different aspects of his personality, or should I say career, or should I say skill set and talents. He's been an MC. When I talk about an MC, this is a guy of albums. You see, you see there's a singles, the EP, albums, my friend, and a mixtapes. He has done it. He has been there. Awards are Mezipata. He built a name within the gospel industry. Yeah, and I'm talking about within the rap. If you know gospel rap, you should know this guy. Then on top of that, we've got a TV career that he's gone in from presenting to acting and other things. And then now he has, I don't know if the word is reinvented, metamorphosized. I don't even know what the word is, but he has evolved. He has redefined himself. Um, 
I don't even want to use the word redefine himself because he's always been a pastor in that aspect of doing these different things. His, his vision has been one, but the way he has reached and done things has been different. Hey, I'm preaching right now. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, and therefore he is now a senior <clears throat> pastor and we're going to be hearing all about this, a motivational speaker. He speaks at different conferences. If you're at the R Festival, he's a face that uh, you're seeing. We call him a voice of to this generation, a relevant voice to this generation, one who is able to take God's word and demystify it and speak true. Some of you say he's controversial. Hey, Nikona, where um says as in Guinea and as much but to Zingine, even me, I'm just like hey, Mr. T. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, chicka chicka chi, including my crew right here, Aizo and Wamai, put your hands together for none other than I'm going to call him the way I call him, Mr. T, <laughs> aka Pastor T. <laughs> First and foremost, Mr. T, yeah. aka Pastor T. In yeah. fact, it's Pastor T. I'm going to try my best to keep saying Pastor T, but I know you from this other life, so sometimes Mr. T, Natoka. Mr. T is the real deal. Mr. T is the real deal. Eh? Uh, the pastor came later. But uh, Mr. T is Mr. T. Mr. T is Mr. T. Yes, yes. But it's true, you're a pastor now, so you know, it's it's it's, it's good for me to give respect where it's due. That's true. You get what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so you know the rules in this show. Thank you so much for the years. Mm. Kwanzaa, thank you for honoring CT and coming here. Thank you, thank you. It's been a long time, I think, waiting. Yes. I think uh, we spoke last year, mm -hmm. and you said, boss, uh, next year. Was it last year or January? Did we, speak? We, speak? we spoke last year and then we spoke again in January. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. So I believe this is the day that the Lord has made, finally. <laughs> we may rejoice and we are glad in it. Yes. <laughs> you guys, I am so excited. You know, on CT I say you never truly know people yeah. until you take time out to get to know people. That is from. I remember there's a time me and you were coming from, I think it was a Groove Awards or a mission trip somewhere. I just dropped my second album mm -hmm. and we're coming... It was a long drive. We we're coming from Kisumu or those somewhere those sides on Nakuru. Mm -hmm. And that's when I the last time I can say I was thinking about when is the last time I sat down and talked with you proper. Mm -hmm. That's the last time as a musician I spoke with you. Yeah. Proper, proper. But of course I've seen you in different aspects, doing different amazing things. And I want to hear how this journey evolved <laughs> to what it is. I forgot to say, guys, uh. he is a husband to one and a father to two. To two. <laughs> Hey, that one. You know, I, I don't just like, um, what's the word? Introducing people on the basis of their career. Okay. Uh, people are holistic human beings. That, that's very true. Yeah. That's okay. Very true. This thing, we started from the very beginning. So what was the very beginning? The 19, very beginning. 1985, 16th or 17th of August. <coughs> Depending with the person keeping the records, because my mom told me, um, I was born on 16th, but the nurses came on 17th. <laughs> so, so the record were captured on 17th, but I was born on the 16th. It's only that the nurses came late. Mm. Uh, <laughs> born in Samburu, that's the mystery. Uh, my, my, my mom and dad, uh, my dad used to be uh, work in the veterinary department as, a, as an accountant, then got married to my mom. And later, my mom also joined the veterinary department as a secretary. Mm. So that was a very humble background. Uh, so we lived in Trukana. Uh, what? And then we lived in Samburu. <coughs> and we are looking back in the 80s here. Yeah. You know, that, 85 that's, now. Yeah, yeah. That's when Trukana was Trukana. If people are talking of Trukana right now, you can imagine how it was then. And Samburu also. Mm. So that's where I was born. I remember there's a time I went to visit the hospital, you know, just to see. And I remember I got a nurse there who gave me the record and said, here's your record. It's true you're born in this hospital. And I was even showed the world where I was delivered. And it was, it was such a humbling moment. Uh, just looking at, um, you know, what we call destiny versus the place of your appearance. Mm. Because sometimes uh, where people are born does not look like where people are going. So literally looking at Samburu, I couldn't believe that, you know, this was the place of my showing forth. But I had God had his own design. <coughs> then we came to, to Ngong. I think we lived in Ngong for... Goja, Goja, Goja. What happened to the place? Mos, Mos. Yes. Um, what number in the family are you at this time? I'm number two. You're number two? Yes. Who's, who, who, comes, who comes before you? Uh, there, there's a big brother. Mm, and yes. in your family currently, are you only two? Uh, no, we are four. Okay. Two brothers, two sisters. So how how tell me a little bit about your your parents Veteran, explain what it is they were doing my dad my dad was an accountant when i sat down with my dad what he told me um 
he didn't get the opportunity to go to the university but he was a very smart guy mm. back in the days that was his dream uh, all his colleagues made it but because of poverty he didn't get the opportunity yeah. so because of going all the way to form 6 So he got employed as an accountant. I think back in the days it was easy as long as you have the papers. Yeah. So of course you begin from a very low level. You know the gava jobs. Mm-hmm. You move from one level to another. So for him it was that very slow upward, you know, scaling up and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my bro was born in Turkana by the way. He's currently a DJ in Bahrain. He's called <laughs> DJ Jomex. <What? laughs> Na hizo music I can see music ilikuwa hapo pale. Yeah yeah music ilikuwa hapo. Yeah he was my rival so I think the first diss track I wrote I wrote to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, so kind cool. of the sibling rivalry being the first one I think he didn't believe in me mm. and so I think we we colluded a lot to a point now I had to prove to him that uh, you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm my own man yani yeah, whatever I do. Yeah. Uh, and part of where kwanza ulikuwa na noma sana cuz he used to tell me unaona bila umsi ana rap even una fa ku rap nikamwambia mimi si umsi <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so that's it so my parents used to work there mm. in fact i think it's my dad who employed my mom it was a technical <laughs> yeah. kind of joining yeah. eh? yes. cuz when i hear my mom alikuwa anamwambia ah na leo nitachelewa job unajua <laughs> cuz the boss used to be in the house yes. but it was an amazing journey how, how long were you so you're born in Samburu uh, but your parents were first in Turkana. Yeah, my my brother was born in Turkana. You're... Then I think they were transferred by the government to Samburu. Okay. Then later now they came to Ngong. How long how long were you in Samburu? I, we didn't stay for long because my vivid my memory okay. what I can remember from as young as I was uh, my life began in Narok. Oh, in Ngong now. In Narok, Narok. Oh, Narok. Yes. Eh, eh, okay. Was, from Samburu na Ndanarok. Yeah, kutoka Samburu nafikiria tulika nikiwa between 1 year to 1 and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, cuz mimi memory yangu naikumbukia Narok sasa. Okay. You know those childhood memories. Yes. Uh, I think that's where now my mind opened up. Okay. And it is in Narok, you know okay. going Kingia back. Narok, going back to, you know, kindergarten. Eh, kitambo kuko na kindergarten ilikuwa mm. nursery school. Yes. You stay in nursery school mpaka uweze kushika masikio hivi, you know. Uh, that, that was the drill. <laughs> <laughs> that was the drill then. So my, my my childhood all my childhood and I think uh, my life I've spent a lot of time in Narok. Uh that's where now that that became my home. Mm-hmm. And I saw I saw my parents you know grow uh, we I didn't come from a very privileged family that one I would say. Mm. Um I saw my dad literally become the pillar cause my mom and my dad I think my dad ndio alikuwa na kanika meomoka. You know those those families where yes. you have one person who looks like he's privileged mm. so what my dad did and is a man I really respect my dad worked all his years educating his brothers and educating my mom's sisters Yo. so all his investment everyone in our family my aunties and my uncles everyone was raised by my father what so the dude literally worked to make sure that people have a better life uh one day I remember I just having a man to man talk and he told me you know I wanted to be mean I'll be living in my own mansion driving the latest car but when I look back I see my investment in other people and that gives me a lot of joy you know and I looked at it and I said wow this is this is serious because that's what he did so we grew up how how is it it sounds like it's this this conversation sounds like you and your dad had a you guys were a tight family uh Or we, are you? we became t- I became tight with my dad later okay because at this time and hustle too Yes because later uh, when I was growing up of course I didn't understand my dad. Mm. I think I was a man I was independent in my way kind of because uh, from nursery school to class 4 by the time I was in class 4 I was running my own gang. I was very influential at a very young age. <laughs> I was What? in a school called Lenana Primary so, School. Uh, so you go to nursery so Lenana Primary School is the first school. So that's the, the first school. And it's in Narok. And it's in Narok. Okay. So yeah. in Lenana Primary School by the time I was in class 1 um my desk mate uh, right now my desk mate is the current I think um the current uh, secretary in the county um he was the son of an MP. Mm. Uh then my other desk mate was a Muslim who came from a very influential family and you know they had all this wealth and and you know I was surrounded and then my other desk mate alikuwa mtoto wa DC so alafu sasa kuna mimi mtoto wa kuna uncle tasla so it was very hard for me to fit in you know sometimes unajua ngo umesota 
uh, when now you begin to hear what guys are talking about mm. and all that because I think I think I saw my first uh, spaghetti when I was in class four. Me, I didn't know there was anything like spaghetti because oh, me likuanga kasi sembe ni sembe, you know. No point to likula sembe makatukasa tukadara umpishi. And and I think your influence mm. ilianza kunipatia space ya kujaribu ku find identity and presence mm. and so the only way to find my identity and presence was now to come up with a very negative kind of team so I was running a whole gang because there's a place we are living and then to come move to kaingia ghetto mm. uh, kuna place inaitwa majengo so majengo na rock ni ghetto kuna majengo mm. ya juu na majengo ya chini mm. so situ liko majengo ya juu hiyo ni ghetto so most of my buddies now came from there in fact by class 4 the guy who later became the ringleader of the street family was part of my crew what uh the other one alikuwa too i think kuna moja mwenye ali end up into crime i think size yako jela um then the other two alikuwa too was a mta so i had a clique of around six guys i was untouchable and um to grow in your class 4 yeah in class 4 get off anyo na machua mapema yani unajua survival mapema cuz i remember tukiwa parade e chozetu ilikuwa siku ya kufunga mnambio mbebe panga au kuja na panga slash ama jembe uh, for, for, <laughs> e, to clear the field yes. so when you close and when you open you need those tools to clear the field so i remember it was during a closing day yeah, hizo zilikuwa weapon <laughs> so ilikuwa closing day and i remember tulikuwa tunapanga line there's a way you know kulikuwa na line ya class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 and then the head boy will come to make sure that the line is straight so mimi nochokozi tu nikaeka tumbo mbele umse akani punch na alikuwa class 7 going to class 8 akani piga ngumi akaniambia wewe ni unafanya ujinga nikamwambia boss nime umepiga tunafunga na wewe sasa mimi ni class 4 so the whole school knew kuna class 4 anafunga na class 7 okay. and uh, everyone was waiting for that war <laughs> but the funniest thing i didn't fight uh, my boys did the work <laughs> <laughs> your crew your gang my gang did the work So uh, the report reached the mysteries. Ki se ma gang for real it was a gang. Ye yeah, nikuwa gang maze. I see it yet ka ka. Walikuwa ruthless. Waswali ngia bush wakakam na mamiti to catch up class 7. So kulikuwa na whole news even my brother was afraid kulikuwa na whole news. Eh class 4 match up class 7. Uh, cuz everyone waited for that war you know <laughs> it's big back in the days kufunga na msay it was big yeah. and then uni class 4 nafunga na na class 7 going to class 8 nani prefect so it was meant to go to class 5 so the news one ikafikia ikafikia my <coughs> my dad na the news ikafikia the principal so everyone was waiting for us to open school but at that time my dad realized now uh, i think i'm losing this guy so he decided to take me to a boarding school <laughs> <laughs> Bro, uh, okay first and foremost for context yeah because you said ngong yeah i've been to the mara yeah and when you go to the mara you pass narok yes yes that's where that's the area that you're saying you now see. that's the area okay yes okay uh, ba- back in the days it was like a small village mm. uh, so that's the area wow. from narok to mara is around i think 150 180 kilometers yes. it's quite some journey yeah, yeah. so narok narok yondo mta that's where i've grown <laughs> This is what's confusing me. Mm-hmm. Uh, your name is Mwangi. Yes. So you're Kikuyu. Yes. What are you doing in these all these different areas? I think it's because of my parents trade. You know, working in the veterinary mm-hmm. department, you need to buy a cows are uh, literally no. you need to be in the nomadic field. Yes. So they kept Masai. on moving and they kept on moving through Kana Samburu and then now we found ourselves in the Maasai land. Okay. So that's how we found ourselves there. Okay. Though it was tricky because uh, all the post election violence used to be very tough on us. Mm. Uh, cuz you know now you have to be ethnically profiled you know i hear people talk of uh, elections and war and i'm like you know many people don't understand what this means when you are marginalized in a certain area mm. uh, cuz now they used to profile us i remember there's even a time i think in 1992 we wow. had to be dressed like women cuz they were targeting the boy child I, i was a young boy and I, and i remember my mom literally dressing me as a as a as a girl so we are given girl dresses unanyolewa so you don't look like a boy or a girl and then you are taught how to respond because they will ask you two three questions and then in Maasai and then you need to answer it was so bad because the area mp had given an order and it was live he said wakikuyu mtalala flat kama basha that is 1992 Whoa. and i tell you the truth uh, i was there because i will see them 
we'll see the Maasai Morans come from the MP's house, fully charged, singing war songs. Wamevaizo ngo zao za kimasai, na spears, and I tell you, they meet anyone who's a kikuyu, that's it. People talk of these things casually, but some of us were in the, in the, in the heat of the whole thing. To a point now, we had to invite our, our, our Maasai uncle to come and live with us so that he can say he's the owner of the house and they will not touch him. Yo, bro, yeah. me, you know, you said post-election violence. My head ran to 2007. Well, no, Nongia Juya, multi-partism, the change. Yes, 1992, 1997, because Narok was a hot spot. And, you know, that it was considered that that's supposed to be a Maasai territory. Mm. And these other people are called Madoadoa. Madoadoa simply <laughs> means... Madoadoa, yes. I remember that. I yes, remember yes. that. Yes, so these were considered uh, as intruders. And you know, the worst part is that the people you love, the people you've grown with, like I remember it's only during the Kibaki era that our land was restored. We had 10 acres somewhere in a town called Kisiriri. What? And literally people came and said, I told you, Makaratasi. And my grandmother was kicked out. I remember my grandfather hiding uh, in a tank in that time so that he cannot die because they were targeting, they were targeting older, any, anyone, they were targeting anyone that is a man. You mm. know, the concept of the Bible, kill all the men. Mm. They didn't have a problem with women. So when my grandfather heard that these guys are coming and they, the guys were sent by our neighbor, our next door neighbor, no one on a road. Because I remember uh, these guys came, these are young Masai Morans, they came and they asked my, my grandmother to cook for them. And my grandmother cooked. And you know the way naturally a grandmother will serve food mm. with her hands. Mm. So she had to cook again. And then she gave the milk. Then they asked to patia sauce maziwa. Now that's the cow. Because how do you have milk and you don't have the sauce? Mm. And that day my grandfather is in a tank, half water, and is there at the age of 70. More than, I think more than 70 years old. Hiding. And then later, my father comes to the neighbor, uh, just to tell him now, I think to have Kuhama, Nyumbaetu Ilibiwa, the few things that were left, we want to bring them. Then my father finds his whole unit in that guy's house. Guy, 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 guy. And he's like, wait, so this is the guy who has been planning on our attack. It was so sad. When you hear neighbor turning against neighbor, mm. that thing is like a spirit. Yani people you've lived together, uh, people you've worked together, sometimes you even Christmas you organize together because I remember we used to go to Shags. It's all day to look at me on a TV. So Mzayal Kwana Beba TV to Nandanayo Shags. The whole village will come. And I tell you, these are our neighbors. Then you hear, you find your whole unit in a neighbor's house. It was so heartbreaking. So you guys had to move then? Yeah, for te I think for 10 to 12 years, people used to live in our shamba. We couldn't take them out. And these are strangers. Some will live in farm. You have the title, but someone will say he's in Makaratasi. You came and stole our land. Uh, it's so bad. But I bless the Lord. Uh, slowly, the government took over system, Sharia, nini, nini. Now we are back. We're even farming in the same land. But still, the tension is still mm. there. Mm. You know, still people look at you funny. You go to that town, you can sense the silence. You drive, and then you drive in your farm. Because... You know, some of these things are like spiritual codings. I hear, I hear you. Yes. I hear you. There's, there's, that hatred is beyond hatred. Yes, oh, yes. It, it, it. Okay, we'll, we'll get there. Let's go back to this primary. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so, so the gang here, so after doing this thing, I think my dad realized uh, this guy is getting lost. Because again, I had escapades of stealing from my father. You know, remember, I'm trying to fit in into a crowd. Um, yo, yo, yo. I'm here, my desk mate is the MP son. My other desk mate is the DC son. My other desk mate comes from a very rich, wealthy Muslim family. Mm. So I'm trying to fit in. So I began to steal because, you know, these guys will come, give you sweets. Uh, I remember the first time I saw a lollipop. boy. And you the police and you feel in there. I think it's a kilometer of Zana. You know, and I can't forget it quite a papo, you know. <laughs> and so trying to fit in, I think Nikanza took me back home. Uh, that, that, I was very young, class two, class three there. Mm. And I think that's when now the gang mentality came up. Uh, because uh, peer pressure and also that, that concept of trying to fit into a certain company. Because I remember mm -hmm. uh, there's a time, now you time to learn about food in a dish. Uh, dish in Kwanga, stuff lani, unayakewa food, eh? mm. unayibeba. So most of the times, kulikuwa na possibility mbili, kwa food iko na supu. Yo supu itamwagiki ya vitabu. So bagi yako mzima inanuka kitchen, unajua. <laughs> the second thing, which was the worst, and you know Narok is very hot, mm. is that by the time you are going for lunch, 
either mboga imeharibika jugali hizi haribika mm-hmm. na supu ile ilik kwa ugali so pia hiyo supu inaonja imeharibika and so sometimes you either go hungry or uh, these guys uh, who came and they have their lunch box mm. you share so it was so unfortunate because i could not share my lunch box with them cuz what someone is pulling a kuku here the other one is pulling spaghetti here the other one is pulling fries here who gonna ugali skuma hapa na skuma zili spoil so break time i mean lunch time were my worst moments you know cuz i had to go hide it quickly then come and look like i'm fitting in Yo. Yeah, so that opened the door. Identity was was yeah, yeah. in a in a kumaliza this time. Yeah. How how was how was your you and your mom? So just clear okay okay your mom. My mom, my mom we from way back were very tight. Cuz what uh, my mom did and what our mom did from way back, my mom made us believe we have the best in life. She didn't allow this concept of seeing like oh you know you guys come from this area and all that. She made us believe you guys have the best in life mm. and you know all of us are trying to give you the best it's only that now when you exposed to other environments you discover wow Comparison. eh unaanza kufeel like but that na tumesota and for me i understand when you begin to see these ghetto guys get into crime early sometimes mm. it's the pressure of trying to fit in because you have buddies in west and you're coming from ongwa road these guys are talking about java they are talking about kahawa neo kahawa ni sotano and for you sotano is money you can eat a whole week mm-hmm. so to fit in sometimes you find yourself in very compromising situations mm. so you can imagine as early as class 4 so my mom was the disciplinarian but my mom was our best friend okay uh, because she kept on encouraging us and kept on telling us you know what uh, you guys have the best So now I was taken to boarding school at class 4 in still in Narok. No, now I was taken to another place called El Bago. <laughs> El Bago nilikuwa kubaya for selection times. Yes, I go to Njoro, kitoka Njoro na El Bago, nikitoka El Bago naenda Molo. Hiyo shule nilienda huko ndio Danko alisomea. <laughs> danko. <laughs> danko Danko, oh Danko. danko. <laughs> eh, yeah, Danko atalako. Ndiaje <laughs> <laughs> Danko. <laughs> now this school is called Mechinda Boys Boarding. This Boys. was yeah the other school was mixed yeah, it was mixed okay this was like a paramilitary cuz you go to a school it has a thousand plus boys wow wow wow, wow. i felt like my parents dumped me there cuz i was in class 4 my brother was in class 7 the place was cold cuz the school was in the midst of a forest mm. cuz that's where you have the team cells mm. and that time the mau forest was mau forest mm. so the school was on a hill so what year is this around Uh, we are looking at 1994 there okay yeah is it 94 yeah is it 94 yeah 1994 there okay yes so the school was on a hill and um, and it was surrounded with a forest it was serious to a point that if anyone takes a shower after a week that guy was a legend pale shower will go monthly so we are ready we eh do a kulikuwa na njeve na hiyo man hiyo the school has to boil water na hiyo maji na boil the whole night because you can imagine you have to boil water for a thousand, thousand students eh, so so you bathe in shifts kuna watu wa gas ambili sa tatu so sisi wa class board we got now past midnight because that's the only time you can have access to hot water i tell you uko na shawu na sikia nikome okoka hiyo night unasikia una feel fresh I know it's a boys school so you have all these things guys are going for games eh, you're playing so you are sweating and all that but it's so cold but that layer of dirt helps to keep you warm <laughs> <laughs> so it was survival so i think in class 4 personally i was introduced to survival at a very early stage because now you get in this space um if danko gives you the stories of that school uh, danko were you at the same time with danko there danko alikuwa class 7 mimi nilikuwa class 4 oh okay. so danko was with my brother cuz okay. we were taken together okay um so one of the things was that number one taking the three meals was a privilege cuz rarely would you find a teacher on duty supervising uh, supervising you know how you eat yes. because of rain cuz sometimes you get out of class it's lunch time it's raining so the teacher does not have time to stand and organize how people are going to eat. Mm. So what you needed to hear is the bell. Once the bell rings, go out. The fastest evil. Survival for the fittest. Nikukimbia eh. What are going to come here? Wakisema grr. Mbio. Na ukingi upate food unapiga plate ka tatu pamoja. Because the food was little. 
So you enter unapiganisha plate card hata unaziekanisha unatoka nje. You eat. So eating was luxury. <laughs> Taking breakfast, lunch and supper. It, you, you must have been a ninja. So you needed to position yourself strategically to a point sometimes unanyeshewa ukoe nje ya DH. Ndio belly kirim. Shua. <laughs> Bro, this sounds like military camp. Yeah, it was it was without serious. order. <laughs> yeah, without order. Yes. And you know those are the days of caning and all that. And now this is a village boarding school, but you see my father was looking for a school where they perform. You know that was the emphasis mm. of the old school guys. Yes. Ishule we napita. How you survive it's not their problem. For them is ishule we napita. So in class 4 I survived. Class 5 my bro was in class 8. So when my bro cleared I was all alone. Mm. So in class 6 again the 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 influence came i was still this influential guy mm. so in class 6 uh, i was made a prefect in class 7 were, was... were you doing were you doing well in school yes were you doing well but in i was a smart guy uh-huh. yeah i used to be i think majorly top 10 uh-huh. <laughs> and these are school that in our, in our class we had you know we had around 200 students 200 students yeah because now you're looking at you know from class 4 to class 8 and you're looking at a thousand plus but, students but in different streams different streams no no in your class maybe only 40 Uh, not really i think 50 there yeah mm. wow the class was uh, you know we i think we used to pass because of the kenny there you pass because of fear because i tell you it was military wale mm. wale you see the rubber that runs the posho mill mm. ama ile rubber run gari yes. there's a rubber there yes. that's what they used to use hey bro that's dangerous yo kitu kichapo kwa mgongo una jicoil una kai una songa because you don't know you know you can't touch yeah, your back vizuri yeah. so na mwali mwako are ruthless because a teacher will just get in na kuchapa tu mgongo why you making noise and i tell you it was, it was more of a military camp mm. the, the language there was either kenny because <laughs> you can imagine you're dealing with a thousand I can boys if those guys rebel it's over yes so the worst part was ukishikwa kwa noma mm. eh, especially kama kwa pa shule um waso alikuwa na hepa na ndo na buy bread eh waso ameshikwa as due ana vuta figs due anafanya nini that used to be very serious so when you are caught we used to gather kwa parade mm. and then kwa parade meza inaletwa then all the teachers are given canes wow. then una mbo to a shot it was the most uh, disgracing kind of punishment mm. so mnapigo bila short parade na hiyo leo ya dat na nakwambia kulikuwa ili kwa warui Yo 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 squad wa mepigo Friday bado kuna watu watahepa. I think that's the time I understood the man psychology. <laughs> <laughs> Were you part of the guys heparing? No, me was not part of the okay. guys. I think I used to fear the cane. Mm. Uh, plus my dad was also that guy or he was the guy who used a lot of threats to make sure that I'm in school. Mm. Uh, like you know you have to stay here. But I knew the guys were heparing. So I was I was always in all the wrong groups but not um, always on the front line. Okay. And because of my performance, uh the teachers of course knew that I was okay. But I remember there was a scenario uh in class 6 where some boys were there was a, there were some boys there was a, there was an institution that rehabilitates street boys. Mm-hmm. And they had absorbed around 10 of them in school. And they were serious acrobats brought by the church. Mm. And then there was a scenario where these uh these boys were tired with school. The food, the caning and so they decided to burn a dormitory. And my name because the students were told to write the suspects. So my name showed up. <laughs> so so of course they did the search almost been taken to the police. I felt so bad because I felt number one judge was not given time to explain myself. And we were you know that point of being beaten to say the truth mm, mm. and deep down you know you can't even do such a thing mm. but later now the story came these are the guys who organized so i felt bad because no one even came to tell me sorry and yet they've chapped you yes i've been cornered to say i was part of the team so i'm telling them no though i am no even you your lips are very black on avutanga bangi so i'm like you know you can't just look at me my lips are black you know <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, that, that in classics i think it was um, I think something was broken you know ako kaurui sasa kakakuwa is like uh, even the teachers have a very negative perception about me mm. uh, but we continued that school was called survival for the fittest <laughs> na kwambia um, every time to kifunga shule lazima tunge watch movie ya uh, escape from sobibi <laughs> yes because we felt like you know guys this is 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> flick, escape so yeah, so we used to feel like now this is it. Yeah, you know, we are escaping this. This is full machines and all that. So class six, very good. Class seven was made a uh, system. Oh, there's something I've heard you say. Yeah. That that is the only time I've heard you say it. So church say echo in your mind? Nothing. I was a Catholic by that time, mm. and um, for us, you know, at that time, uh, you, you attend mass for the sake of attending. Yes. Uh, there was nothing. In fact, we used to love to go to church on Sunday mm. because there was a girl school uh -huh. called St. Mary's. And the two of us, Michinda boys and St. Mary's girls, that it was enough for us to fill the church. So that was the first service. Yes. <laughs> so, momentary uh, akushai nilikuanga hiyo Sunday. So to go to the church with your day, my to remove. And then on Sunday, it was the best time to go and buy food. You know, makriba and nini. There was something we used to mix. Sukari, blue band, chocolate. And then you suck it the whole day. It was a serious, it was a serious collision. <laughs> You see the, the, the old school way of doing icing. Yes, yes. Yes, so yes. then that katipu na to na lamba to energy. I <laughs> see. <laughs> okay. So Sundays used to be the days like for us to escape and sneak out. Because you can imagine leading almost 700 students to church. And the church is not next door. Mm. They are walking. Oh. So we have to walk by the railway line, almost like two, two to three kilometers. And so because we are a big number, sometimes mwalimu wata ezi yona. So mkifika kwa shop, waswa na ingia, wana toka. Mm -hmm. So we used to make sure that there's someone watching. And then sometimes the teachers are so tired, so they will tell the head boy, you know, you guys are in charge. Yep. And sometimes they'll wait for us in school to check if we bought anything. So what about um, music? Uh, Has it checked it in your life at this time? The person who inspired me to sing was Danko, by the way. Whoa. Yes. 